Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Michael Regina, the author and illustrator of the all ages horror graphic novel, The Sleepover. And I'm here to do a video um, to actually dive a little bit more into this book. I wanted to talk about the real life origins and inspiration for this graphic novel, uh, as it's actually probably the most personal thing I've ever made. And it's based on a lot of things that I kind of went through when I was a kid growing up. So I figured that'd be fun to talk about and share with you the story behind the story. So The Sleepover takes place in the year 1993 with a group of kids uh, kind of living and growing up here. I based it sort of in my head in the Jacksonville area, which is where I was born and raised. And uh, we meet a family with a single mom, uh, the Russo family, and there's Matthew and Judy and their mom, Cheryl, and then a stay-at-home nanny named Ruby, who takes care of this family. Um, and sort of the, the the inspiration for where this idea came from uh, was I grew up in a single-parent home. My parents were divorced when I was pretty young, and uh, my mom managed a restaurant, just like Cheryl does in the graphic novel. And uh, she had to work often late at night. And so this created some problems, you know, from a child care standpoint of like, who's taking care of us kids? How is she going to work? So on and so forth. And uh, the solution at one point in our family was that we had a live-in nanny and her name, her real life name was Ruby as well. And um, I named the character in the book Ruby after her. Um, and Ruby um, really sort of saved our lives in a lot of ways. She really kind of put the pieces of everything back together for us so that there was some level of normality and stability for my family. Uh, when we were little kids. And so my sister and I really were close with Ruby. Um, we spent a ton of time with her fishing and eating and talking and watching movies together and this sort of thing. Um, and when, uh, when I was young, she kind of got sick very, I don't think it was suddenly in real life. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I probably need to sit down and talk to my mom about all the, the super specific details, but I just remember her getting sick and we were on vacation and there was a struggle with getting the information over to us as a family that she had passed away and we came home from vacation uh, just like happens in the book and to, to learn that she had passed away um and this was as a kid i think the first like major loss i can ever remember having where somebody i was very close to was gone um and it was such a big part of my life and um that sort of served as the the backdrop for the the initial catalyst of the idea for this story was what it was like to kind of lose somebody so suddenly like that that meant so much to you um, and was you know not our blood family but was like family to our family you know and all the feelings that goes into that um, you know as a kid I don't I don't remember a lot of like how I felt about that as a kid other than being obviously sad and losing somebody that meant a lot to me I don't think I had a lot of um, perspective on it uh, like I do now but as I'm getting older um, you know losing friends and losing family unfortunately it starts to become a bit more commonplace and you start to lose people that you knew. And so I've been thinking a lot lately about, well, what do we do when we lose somebody? How do we, uh, how do we cope with difficult times? And uh, I had at the time been wanting to make, uh, before the sleepover was actually a fully formed idea in my head, I was uh, wanting to tell a story about a group of friends who were having some sort of sleepover party or something together, and they became trapped inside of a house with uh, some sort of monster. And this uh, this like very basic nugget idea of friends having a sleepover party, something goes wrong, there's a monster inside the house, was really sticking with me, but I didn't have like the meat or the bones to like put around that story so that it, um, it had meaning and depth to it. And uh, I was actually just driving uh, to take care of a license renewal on my driver's license when um, the, it sort of like crashed, like this idea came smashing in of what if I did a story that was thinking about and contemplating on this loss that I experienced with Ruby dying as a kid uh, and talk about that. And I can use that as the catalyst for 
the sleepover party and somebody new coming into the home that was a monster. And uh, I, so it was like, I was like, yeah, that sounds amazing. Let's base it on this very specifically real thing that happened. And so um, I kind of kept taking that additional steps further. And so I was like, well, what if I really did make sort of a fictionalized version of my own family and a fictionalized version of my friends at the time and um, fictionalized version of Ruby. And so like none of the specifics of things that happen within the book are real, but nearly every aspect of the story is based on real things that I went through, real people that I knew and, and still know. Um, and uh, it was really a fun, really, really fun um, trip down memory lane of thinking about people that I had such a fondness for growing up. All three of the friends that uh, Matthew has in the story are based on real friends that I had and uh, still know one of them today. And we still, uh, you know, talk with each other, keep up a little bit on social media. And it's so cool to, to just um, be able to say like, hey man, you know, you made, I had so much fun with you as a kid. And uh, so much so that it really inspired me to think about how I wanted to tell this story, you know? Um, it, it's so, it, it is such a weirdly personal, story. I've seen some feedback from others who say, well, maybe the, the circumstances seem strange or whatever. That seems unbelievable. But like the truth is like, you know, we were a middle-class family who had a, a live-in nanny with us. And, um, it, it really, these sort of basic events really did happen, really did grow up with a nanny for a period of time. She passed away. Um, it really affected our family. And then the people who came in after her, um, while not, you know, bad people or anything, there was a, just a very specific um, place in our hearts for Ruby and it was never the same. And so the, the story sort of stemmed off of that and then became more, you know, scary and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, and, and the sort of the large crux of the story, the thing that the story is all about is this idea that when we're in difficult times, we need each other. Um, and as I said, as I'm dealing with new losses, new challenges as an adult, seeing my friends and family go through health issues or dying and this sort of thing, um, I'm thinking a lot about, well, how are, what do we do when we're going through these terrible things? And, um, you know, of losing someone we care about. And so I wanted to tell a story that is hopefully fun and funny, but also has a, a lot of depth to it um, that will uh, older readers will appreciate and will maybe just like leave the seed of an idea for the younger readers of like, hey, you know, when we're all going through some really tough spots, some difficult times, we need to be there for each other. I need to be there for my friends. But those are the, uh, the inspirations for it is and to encourage people, hey, be there in, in the people you care about's lives um, when they're going through difficult things. Um, let's let's um, let's not forget each other. Let's be there for one another. And hey, while we're at it, let's let's beat up some monsters and stuff. So <laughs> that's uh, that's the, uh, the the sort of true life origins of this story. Uh, if you've never read The Sleepover, I'd love for you to give it a try. Hopefully, you can pick it up at a bookstore or a library somewhere. Uh, if you have read it, I'd love for you to re leave a review for it on Amazon or uh, Goodreads or wherever you purchased your book. Um, every bit of that sort of thing helps and it gets the word out for the story. Also, if you are a teacher or a librarian uh, and would like to have me come and speak to your kids, I'd love to do it. I can do virtual visits. I can also do in-person visits. Uh, you can find information on my site. I'll put that info down in the description below. And uh, just again, thank you so much for hanging out and hearing this sort of backstory about the sleepover. Uh, I have more videos in mind. Hopefully I'll be back more soon. And uh, thank you so much. Happy reading and uh, I appreciate all of you. Take care.